Okay, now we're going to be looking at model conversions. So when we talk about model conversions here, we're going to look at <clears throat> how to convert a matrix transfer function to a state model. We've already looked at that somewhat. And then how do we work with interconnected systems? Interconnected systems. So there are a number of different kinds of interconnections. We'll look at all of these. Um, some of these will be more useful than others. And uh, state model conversion to transfer function, we, uh, I've shown that already. Um, so these middle ones are the ones we're going to be looking at here. So the state models of interconnected systems. In continuous time, <clears throat> I'm going to use this block diagram notation. A, B, C, D corresponds to this set of equations. X dot is equal to AX plus BU. Y is equal to CX plus DU. Or similarly, the transfer function. Uh, there should be a C here. So continuous time. Similarly, in discrete time, A, B, C, D corresponds to this set of discrete time equations or this transfer function. Okay, <clears throat> so what happens now if we have two systems in series? That is, the input U comes into this system and the output of this system goes into the next system and then we get the overall output. What does the overall state model look like when we, com when we combine these two systems and form an overall state model? So here are the state equations and output equations for the two systems. x1 dot is equal to a1 x1 plus b1 u b1 so here's th that's this one here Um, x1 dot the state associated with this is a1, x1, b1 the input here is y2 y1 is equal to c1, x1 plus d1 times y2 here this state is equal to a2, x2 plus b2, u y2 is equal to c2, x2 plus d2 U. So that's where these equations come from. So now I, I can just take the state equations and put it into an overall matrix form. And when I do that, I have x1 dot is equal to a1 times x1 plus b1 times y2. But y2 is all of this stuff. So I'm going to get b1 times c2 times x2, b1 d2 times u. Similarly for the second equation, the second equation is simpler, it's just this, x2 dot is equal to a2x2 plus b2u, and now y, which is the overall output, is actually equal to y1, so it's c1 times x1 plus d1 times c2 times x2 plus d1 d2 times u. So we can, we can combine the states of models in series this way. And so we can think then of this interconnection as having this state model. So A1, B1, C1, D1, A2, B2, C2, D2. Notice that if either D1 or D2 is zero, this will be zero. Okay, so this is what we have when we're in series. What about parallel? So here in parallel, both systems receive the same input, and the outputs of both subsystems combine to form the overall output. So here we have the state equations associated with each of the two. All of them have the same input. And then the output is the sum of the two outputs. So the sum of y2 plus y1 and we can go through and show that these combined give this overall state model. So notice that the A matrix is block diagonal. The B matrices stack, the C matrices stack side by side, and in this case the D matrices add. So we can show then that in this representation we can write the ABCD matrices down from our original state model. 
and this is what it looks like. So we've looked at series, we've looked at parallel. What about feedback? So in feedback, it's a little more complicated. Okay, so here we have an overall input that comes into our feedback system. We have the output of the summer I call U1. So that's the input to this first system. The input to the second system is actually Y or Y1. Okay, so, so what's going on here? In general, our input will be of dimension M. Our output will be of dimension P. Our states for X1 will be of dimension N1. This input to this subsystem is of dimension P and its output is of dimension M. It will have states of dimension N2. Okay, and so we just write down the state equations from all of this. So, so when we do this, x1 is equal to a1x1, b1, u1, y1 is equal to c1x1, d1, u1, x2 dot is equal to a2x2, b2, u2, y2 is equal to c2x2 plus d2, u2. Now, u1 is given by u minus y2. Y2 is all this stuff. But Y2, so U minus Y2, so U minus, that's all of that stuff. But now Y1 is given by all of this stuff. So we plug all that stuff in for Y1, and we get all of this mess. And we notice I have Y1, U1 on this side, and U1 on that side. So that makes it a little complicated. So in order to find U1 then, I would take this term over to the other side, okay, So, and I would factor out u1, and then I would multiply it through by the inverse. Actually, in this case, it's going to be the inverse of i minus d, uh, i plus d2 d1, okay? And so we can go through and show that we get this overall state model. Wow, look how complicated that is. A much more complicated than either the series or the feedback connections. In particular, I have these R matrices that I have the inverse of. So notice that R1 is I plus D1, D2. R2 is I plus D2, D1. So we have, we have that form. Um, in general, this matrix, uh, this identity matrix will be of dimension, of dimension P. This will be of dimension M. And so we get all of this. So why is it so complicated? It's because when I solve for U1 here and plug it in here, that's obviously going to make, I'm going to have a complicated expression in X1 dot. But I also am going to plug it in here. Y1 uh, becomes U2, right? So all of, so all of that comes in and, and it adds to the complexity of both of these guys. And so this is what we get. So I can write it in different forms. For example, here I have R1 inverse. Like, how did R1 come out since we had I plus D2 D1? D2 D1 is associated with R2. So how did R1? Well, it turns out you can simplify the expressions and, and simplify it down to this. All right, so this is this is what we get when we <clears throat> work the equations. So complicated, and so in a in this block diagram representation, this is what we get. Again, complicated. Now, what happens if one of these guys is zero? For example, what happens if this guy is zero? Well, everything simplifies down greatly. I don't have any inverses to worry about. Right? So in this case, if D1 is 0, both R1 and R2 are just identity matrices. So that simplifies greatly in this case. And so this is, this is what our ABCD matrices look like in this loop when we have one of these being uh, having D equals 0. So what happens now if we consider the multi-input, multi-output case? That is, I have an input coming in here and an input coming in here. Well, then I get this state model. 
Okay. Notice again, I, I still use zero here, and so I have this simple form. Obviously, it's going to be more complicated if I have something at D1 that's not zero there. Um, and, I, and I have two inputs, and I actually have two outputs, Y1 and Y2. I just called them, I combined them together to call Y, and so our overall out system output has, is multi-input, multi-output. So my A, B, C, D matrices are all matrices. They're not uh, columns or rows, just rows. So this is what happens when we have an interconnection of state models, how to get an overall state model from them.